Hi, it's Anthony from oqplay.com and today we're checking out some products from Zyba VR. They make a number of accessories that I've already covered. And I think I've done a dock from them and I've also done a golf club accessory as well from them too. All great products, good build quality, good company. Today I've got three products to show you from them that they kindly supplied me. We've got some grips for the controllers. We've got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack that attaches to the side of the head strap and we've got a separate IR blaster should you already have a head strap and you want to attach an IR blaster should you want to play at night or play in a very dimly lit room where their tracking does not work as well for the Quest 2. So let's first check out the grips. So here's what you get inside the box. You get the user manual for the controllers and how to install them. You get the grips themselves with their knuckle straps already pre-attached. You get the batteries, this is a charging grip after all, so these go inside your Quest 2 to recharge. You get two silicone front protectors for the sensor rings. You get two Velcro ties, not quite sure what they will be used for yet. And you've got two to one USB cable for charging the controllers as well. And then as a little bit of a free gift, you get two quite flat headed uh, thumb grips. So that's quite rare to see that kind of um, cap for the controllers, but so we'll try those in a minute. So looking over the grips themselves first, you've got a indication there, blue and red. They're not lights, they're just like little bit of um, plastic coloring on top of the plastic. There's a little bit of a rough grip material there for the top of your palm. And um, for your fingers, there's a little bit of a ridged edge there to get some form of grip. There's like a silicone cover on the back of the straps. You're not really going to get any sort of strap marks. Uh, this is going to protect you. And then the buckle is at the top. It's not removable, unfortunately. And there's a section there which houses the elastic bungee cord. So there's a little bit of give there. And then on some of the ones that we've seen already, there's like a button that you can depress. And that basically lets you tighten and loosen the, the grip that way as well. Uh, this goes around your controller at the top and it's got two little bunny ears that attaches over to the controller as well. So that's basically it in a nutshell. And there's a USB-C power charging port on the bottom. So it does extend the grip a little bit and that's fine if you like that, uh, but we'll see how that feels once we've actually got it on our controllers. So let's get it on our controllers. So we're gonna go with the right controller and you first have to take off the stock panel. This is um, the charging grip for the Kiwi that I've got in at the moment. So you start bare bones with this and then we're gonna get the batteries and choose the right one, right indication on here, I've got the right indicator. This goes into the bottom, so with a plus, Facing downwards, that goes up in there, and then that sits in the controller like that. So these little pins are gonna come through and contact a section of the controller. So I assume this is the right one. So we leave that bare bones, and then we basically push this all the way through until it kind of clicks in, such as like that. The grip gets uh, not sort of covered in any way, so that still functions just fine. And then we bring these bunny ears over and secure them in place. So with this, it's not gonna block that many sensors at the front. It's quite narrow, so I wouldn't worry about that. And if even if they did, I, I wouldn't really worry about it too much, uh, them getting blocked. Uh, let's take this cap off that I've got or had on for many, many months. Let's try their square version. It goes on very easily, so I don't know if it's gonna very easily come off. But it does have a slight sort of concave state. So that's quite nice, I uh, quite like that. Right, so that's the right grip, grip installed. I think that looks all right, don't you? Got a bit of Zyber branding on the right. Again, silicone, so it is a dust pickup magnet. Uh, the grip, less as much, um, but it's very easy to get into the grip there. And then you just pull that that will wear down over time. Uh, any grip that has this kind of bungee material, it will wear down. So what I recommend is that you get this to a not so tight, sort of give it a de depress once or twice um, with the weight of the controller pushing down. And then you really shouldn't really need to have this super tight because when you're boxing or you're doing any sort of fast movement, this is not really shouldn't really be, you shouldn't really be letting go as such. So this is only really to support the back of your hand. So if you were to let go, there is support there and it shouldn't really go flying off. If you're really that bothered, you'll have the wrist strap on anyway, but I've never had the wrist, wrist strap. This is totally fine. The grip is actually quite nice in that it's not 
really too extra bulky. Um, the Kiwi one, the really early version of the ver the first sort of long handled ones, they were a little bit too bulky for me, but this isn't too bad considering that you're gonna be able to charge from these as well. But other than that, I've got quite medium to smallish hands. So if you've got small hands, then maybe you might want to avoid um, a grip like this because it really does make it a little bit bigger compared to the stock size of the handle. You can see how much bigger it is there. So that's the right one. Let's just quickly do the, the other one. And that's it. We're good to go. So loose and then just tighten it. And it does feel a bit tight on the bottom here for me. So I just depress it sort of twice. And then that's a good way I can quite quickly get in there. You still have to do a little bit of adjustment because of the silicone is quite got a bit of friction on it. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's the controllers. So these bits are a bit dangly now and apparently you can kind of bring them over and have them sort of hooked up like that. Uh, so that gets rid of the slack, which was also an issue that I had in a previous grip and it does stay there when you take your hand out then look at that, it does come off. So it's not a perfect solution, but um, if you want to get rid of them and you've got them already on your hands, you can just quickly pull that over and that silicone will do some level of staying on the back end of the grips and not really come flying off. So that's good, there's no sort of dangly bits hanging out. Nice color coding so you know what's right and left if you haven't got anything like I've got here with some stickers available from my shop. And then um, the grip wise, don't really, it's not so intrusive. It's not, it's not rough, it's not, it's quite smooth. There's some gaps there for um, general air flow to go through, not so much on the palm, which is probably where I probably would have wanted it. But if you're really sweaty, it's silicone, you can wipe this down. No problem. Again, if you're using this for fitness, very supportive and uh, definitely does the job. So there are the controllers all ready to go and to be powered up. So let's just try these silicone grips on the rings. So they're not really labeled in any way. They look pretty universal. So let's just try one. And if I if it works, I just got lucky. Um, I'd say that's the opposite way. So you have to do this on the other side. Okay, so I think you've got to take off this element, put this on. I'm not a fan of sensor rings. I think unless you play in a very close environment uh, space in your home where you've got lots of potential things that you can hit, then yes, sensor rings are a good idea. But if you're lit, if you're mostly playing in an open space, I personally don't think you need them. And it's an accessory that a lot of companies and things try and um, push onto you as a thing that you should really have. Don't get me wrong, the halo rings are good and probably worth investing if you're a first time VR player. But if you're a little bit more of a veteran, you've played it a lot of times over about a year or so, you might find you don't use them anymore like I have. So that goes over the sensor ring like that, keeps it in place. It does lift up the sensor ring a little bit, but again, it's a silicone cover. So you can already feel that there's dust on there. Um, it's not like smooth. I would have liked a, a better material. It does fit in there okay nicely though. Being see-through, it shouldn't really affect the emitters that much, but honestly, I don't think I need them. So I wouldn't be using them. But I'll keep these on for now. Let's get the other one on. All right, so that's the left one fitted. Um, Takes a little bit of uh, adjustment to get it over the side of the sensor ring, but once you've got it on there, it's fine. And again, it's picking up all the dust. Right, so that's the left hand side sensor ring all sorted. I'll give these a little bit of a play and see how I get on. It does lift up now and then in various areas. So that's the sensor rings all done. So let's have a go at charging. So um, I'm not really sure what these were actually for, other than if you were to lose the cable. Perhaps. Um, manual doesn't say anything, so they're just some free cables if you want to use them. So it's a fairly generous size of cable. I'd say it's just around about a metre in length and the split is like the last 30 centimetres. These would then plug, doesn't really matter which side, these would then plug in the top like that. And then I've got a power bank here. I'm going to plug them into. So that's all plugged in and it's charging. And at the moment, there we go. There is some indication See it there. So I don't know if they turn green or go solid red when they go full full uh, capacity. So that just shows you that there's a, there's a little bit of charge there. And then you would just have this sitting next to a wall plugged in or whatever. It's not the same kind of solution as a dock, for example, but knowing Zyber, they make docks. So I reckon in the future, we might see something where these integrate in with the dock uh, if that hasn't been done already. So that's them both charging. I'll give these a bit of a play and um, see how I get on. Right next, we have the Zyber U-shaped 
IR light. Um, it's a three watt IR emitter, which basically lets you play in the dark. It connects to the headphone port of the Quest 2, or you could probably plug it into a USB input port for from a power bank and, and have it fire in the room so the Quest has got something to focus on that way instead if you don't want to have it on your headset itself. So let's see what comes in the box. So it comes in this very nice tidy case should you not want to use it all the time. And then here we have the emitter itself. So you've got three, two powers, 1.5 watts and three watts of light. So it's really not gonna drain the Quest 2 battery itself too much. It has a USB-C connection that basically connects to the USB port in your Quest 2. There's a pass-through USB, which is a nice touch, should you want to charge it alongside like a head strap, for example, a battery head strap, that will go in there and you don't have to worry about charging it separately. Uh, there's a bit of a power button there and the two LED emitters at the front. Also got some converters. You've got USB-C to C. I'm not quite sure what that would be for. Probably if you want to have the emitter firing separately in a different angle, perhaps, quite sure. And then you've got a USB-C to A, should you have a power bank um, that you want to charge it from and it has USB-A. So two little converters there, no cables inside or anything like that. It literally just plugs into the Quest 2. So let's just give that a go. So here we have the IR emitter and it basically slots in like that in a fairly secure way. So that's the IR emitter installed. You can see here it doesn't block the 3.5 mil jack, which is a nice touch. They've thought about that, uh, just scoops in and doesn't avoid that. Um, again, the, the USB-C sort of charging port at the back. So if you've got a battery strap, you can just come in and connect directly into the back there. So I'll take it you just hold this down to sort of power them. So that is illuminated. See there? Um, and you are got red LEDs there so that probably is doing its job at that point. So now this is basically flooding this world, this world, this room in IR light. So if I were to be playing in the dark you would see wherever you're pointing where the emitters are basically going to fire out. So as the emitters fly out the sensors on the Quest is going to pick that up and know where you are in the room. So really good actually I've used it I've used their strap with the IR emitter and that was really, really good way of playing in the dark if that's something that you do very often. So for example, I've got my Bobo M2 Pro here and you can just take the M2 Pro and plug that charging cable into the back of the IR blaster there. The powers can then go through, charge this or power it as well as through pass-through power into the Quest 2. So it charges the Quest 2 as well. So I think that's a really cool feature Definitely thought about that, I think they have, and it's a nice way of getting the IR Blaster onto the Quest 2 without worrying about charging it. Right, I'll give this a bit of a play and see how it works. Okay, lastly, we've got the 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack from Zyber. This basically extends your Quest 2 battery life by probably around 1.5-ish hours. Let's see what's inside the box. Right, so here's what comes inside the box. You have get a user manual, you get the battery pack itself, and even though the manual only says you get one, you get two, or well, I got two, adapters that you can put the battery pack onto. So this just goes onto the side of the head strap and the battery pack basically snaps onto it like that. So we'll just be using one for now and let's get this on our quest. So imagine you've got the Elite strap like this and you wanna give it a battery solution. You basically take the battery clip that goes over the top of that there, quite quite lo-fi if I'm honest. Um, and this strap is so tight and tough that it doesn't actually give a very good, Are these two different sizes. Yes, so that's why they gave you two. You look at the top, see they've got two different size of clips. Uh, one's bigger than the other. So we'll be using this one. That one doesn't work as well. So we'll plug that in, there you go. So that's a nice snug fit on the Elite strap. You can see it's not moving under the stress of that cable now. So that could be positioned wherever you like. We'll just do it on the temple there. So that's the attachment point. And then we get our battery pack with the hooks on there. And you've got a pass through USB there if you need it to charge it and then that basically goes in there like that. There's no audio on uh, connection, which would have been nice to have. Got two charging out of four LEDs there and you can't really decide to turn it on or off. We are charging here though, so uh, 
it comes with half its charge basically. That is on the side there, very, very protruding compared to a capsule battery, which will be closer to the headset. So if we were to put this on, Okay, I don't know if you could hear this. So you got like a little fuzzy tingling sound. Okay, it's improved. Yeah, it went, but as soon as you take it off, it comes back again. And that's a very annoying sound. Basically, the contacts aren't perfectly there. So you kind of get, like when you put a plug in and it starts to buzz, it's gone now. So maybe once the battery kicks in and it, and it starts to draw the, the power out of it, it might actually be doing it then. But yeah, you can start it every now and then, but it, it's really... <laughs> really frustrating so you don't feel the weight too much it's fairly light but the most annoying thing is the sound of the connection it's not great it's a nice way to add a sort of battery snappable battery pack accessory uh, to the headset but um that'll be for charging if i turn it the other way no it it's got like polarity issues, so they can only have it with a USB facing downwards. But um, it's okay. But I think it would annoy me with the noise overall. And I think this whole lo-fi way of connection would have been so much better just by shoving it in the side of the battery pack or doing a similar thing with Bobo VR where you've actually got a wire cable and it's at the back of the headset using their proprietary battery, that would have been a better solution. I think battery should really be on or at the back here. Ideally the more so at the back rather than at the sides. Side solutions are okay, but very temporary solutions. They're not something you would wanna rely on all the time. So um, that's that. Let's see if this, <laughs> I don't think this emitter will plug in underneath. I'm just curious if it does. No, that'd be quite, it kind of does. It doesn't power, so there's no output from the USB port, it's only input. So that is the 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Personally, I would avoid it. Uh, there are better solutions out there. Um, it's not uh, a really good solution for me, at least. If you're after a snappable, side snappable, there's not many that, of those around. So it would do that, but I, I hearing the, the contact buzz every now and then does raise a little bit of alarm bells for me personally. So we've checked out the three products from Zyber. We've got the grips, the IR blaster and the battery pack. I'd say the IR blaster and the grips are probably the best ones out of these three. I probably wouldn't personally buy or recommend the battery pack. It's not a great solution or execution of how to do it properly I think personally. Stick with a rear battery pack or a battery strap. IR Blast is a really good one if you haven't got one already integrated and you do play in the dark. And the grips are a pretty good charging solution. Uh, they're comfortable. Maybe wait and see if they do a dock version to see if um, they release one altogether. Probably wouldn't use the sensoring grips. They really are a dust and fluff magnet. So I wouldn't put these on. The grips themselves, being black, they do show up a little bit of the dust as well. But um, other than that, they're comfortable. They charge. So I've got to keep topped up in charge. And they're probably a little bit expensive at $55 for the grips. So um, I can't quite remember the going rate for charging controller grips at the moment off the top of my head, but that seems quite a little bit steep for a charging grip. They might be the standard rate at the moment. The battery pack is $22 or $23. Um, again, probably put that money into a battery strap and have a better experience overall. And the IR Blaster is only $18. Again, if you play in the dark and you're looking for a solution, this is a nice lo-fi, easy to use, quick to plug in so you don't actually have to have it all the time. Or you can just have it plugged into a battery bank and have it emit into your room instead of wearing it on the headset. It's very light anyway if you were to wear it on the headset, but for a small amount of price, if you do play in the dark, this is quite a good accessory to have for your Quest 2. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. Give us a thumbs up if it has. Comments are always welcome if you have any questions about these accessories from Zyber. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, bye.